arcfieldweather.com meteorologist Paul Oregon here on Tuesday morning, July the 22nd. Kind of a different video discussion today. First, I wanted to take a look ahead to the month of August with respect to Atlantic Basin tropical season. And then I want to start talking about a key factor I like to look at with respect to the upcoming winter outlook for uh, the U.S. And, and the North America as a whole. There's uh, several cold air sources that are of importance for a given winter season in the U.S. One, of course, is Alaska, northwestern Canada. A lot of our cold air masses move northwest to southeast from that part of North America into the U.S. Also of high importance, what goes on in Greenland, Hudson Bay region of Canada, even the Great Lakes with respect to the amount of ice on the Great Lakes, quite important for any kind of a discharge of uh, air masses from the northern part of Canada across the Hudson Bay into the central and eastern U.S. And there's some interesting changes in sea surface temperatures in places like the Hudson Bay of Canada, the Great Lakes, compared to a year ago. And uh, concerned with colder conditions in general, both in terms of air temperatures and sea surface temperatures in that part of North America. So I thought we'd kind of talk about that. First, let's start off on the tropical scene. There was a wave yesterday in the central tropical Atlantic. It has just dissipated, continues to be kind of a quiet start to the Atlantic Basin tropical season. NOAA's uh, National Hurricane Center does not expect any development over the next seven days. That will take us right to the end of the month of July and uh, into the uh, transition period to the month of August. And uh, we'll want to show now the Madden Julian oscillation and how it is hinting at and certainly an uptick in tropical activity as we get into the early part of August. And here is a forecast map of the Madden Julian Oscillation. This is, uh, uh, it tracks a tropical disturbance that kind of reg uh, regularly propagates eastward along the global tropics. And depending on its location, it certainly can have an impact in other parts of uh, the world. And this time of the year, its location can dictate whether, whether there's above normal tropical activity in the Atlantic Basin or below normal. Right now, we are certainly in a below normal phase, but uh, we've seen this kind of a plot before here on these uh, video discussions, discussions. And the way to uh, follow this is in uh, the Matt and Julian oscillation moves in a counterclockwise direction. And these numbers here represent what we call different phases, basically representing different locations for this complex of thunderstorms in the uh, global tropics. And this forecast comes from the ensemble run of the GFS, extends from the 21st of July all the way into August 4th. And we know from past observations that certain phases uh, correlate with activity above normal activity in the tropics of the Atlantic Basin. And typically those phases are 8, 1, and 2. And you notice here what is about to ensue here with respect to the Matt and Julian Oscillation. By the time we get to the early part of August, it is moving along in this counterclockwise fashion and pushes through phase 7 and into phase 8, albeit in a slightly weakened phase. The closer into this inner circle, the weaker the phase, uh, excuse me, the weaker the MJO, in other words, uh, less impact than as if it was farther out here from this inner circle. This is more of a, more or less of a neutral zone. But having said that, the fact that it's rotating through uh, phase seven and then into phase eight uh, during uh, the early part of August, that re raises a red flag that indeed we may finally get an uptick to above normal conditions of tropical activity, uh, maybe during that first two weeks of August, let's say August 1st all the way out to August 15th and 20th or so. Now watch for this to continue to move through these more active phases, again, 8, 1, and 2. This is something we'll monitor, but uh, in addition to the NJO repositioning as we get into early August, of course, we kind of have a climatological ramping up of tropical activity during the month of August, and especially by uh, September, especially the middle part of September, is from a climatological point of view, the peak 
of the Atlantic Basin tropical season. It has to do with sea surface temperatures generally reaching a peak later in August going into the early part of September. So this MJO is something we'll monitor over the next few weeks. But again, it points to the possibility of an uptick to above normal activity in the Atlantic Basin during that uh, beginning during that first half of the month of August. Now let's kind of jump ahead. This is all kind of in the speculation phase here where I want to look at a key factor that I always like to focus in on during the uh, late summer and the fall season as we head into the upcoming winter season. Again, I mentioned up front, we have uh, several different cold air source regions that play a big role in the uh, winter weather conditions across the U.S., especially across the central and eastern states. For example, Alaska, northwestern Canada is very critical cold air source region for the U.S. A lot of cold air masses make their way from northwest to southeast from that part of North America into the U.S. Another area of uh, key importance, really, Greenland, uh, Hudson Bay region of Canada, a lot of times the cold air really drops basically north to south across those areas from Greenland over the Hudson Bay region then ultimately over the Great Lakes into the U.S. So the ice condition on the Hudson Bay in Canada and even the Great Lakes are, are pretty important in terms of whether or not uh, that cold air will be modified as it crosses over the Hudson Bay and over the Great Lakes. So this is kind of an interesting uh, development here with respect to the water temperatures, Hudson Bay, the Great Lakes, today versus a year ago. Let's just kind of focus in. What we're looking at here, sea surface temperature anomalies today. This is a, basically a current look here. I want to focus in on this area right here, which is a, the Hudson Bay region right here. And you can barely see it here, but the Great Lakes are showing up right here. A lot of uh, white here, that means nearly normal water temperatures, and also some blue here, Hudson Bay of uh, uh, Hudson Bay in Canada. So colder than normal, the eastern Hudson Bay, nearly normal in the central Hudson Bay, and pretty much nearly normal throughout the Great Lakes. Now, let's go to a year ago. Look at the big difference, first of all, in the Great Lakes, all well above normal temperatures uh, a year ago compared to right now. And similarly, in the Hudson Bay region, let's go to a year ago, a lot of way above normal temperatures. All of this, even this purplish color here, is on the scale right down here, well above normal water temperatures from a year ago. So this is quite a difference. This is a year ago versus right now, where it's nearly normal to even below normal water temperatures. So the, so the Hudson Bay, Great Lakes, maybe a few weeks ahead of schedule here of cooling off, maybe as much as a month ahead of schedule in terms of the water cooling off. And again, the ice cover on the Hudson Bay and even the Great Lakes play an important role, potentially play an important role in those cold air outbreaks that can make their way from uh, northern Canada into the U.S. So again, this is the current uh, uh, water temperature pattern here from, uh, and this is a year ago. It was very, very warm a year ago, so quite a difference. And uh, we'll see if this pattern continues going into the upcoming winter season. Now, before we move more specifically to Greenland, which is a critical area as well, I want to point that out right here. Notice here, this is uh, a, a year ago, and we see kind of a, a lot of above normal conditions here in the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, let's go to the current scene here. Notice, this is uh, cooled off considerably as well. Again, this is Greenland, plays an important role as a source region in cold air for a given winter season, especially across the eastern U.S. Much, much cooler water temperatures right here between northeastern Canada and Greenland. Again, this is a year ago where uh, some pockets are well above normal, especially down here in the North Atlantic. Now, largely replaced by normal to below normal conditions here. Now, speaking of Greenland, let's go to this particular map right here. This is a compilation of uh, ice and snow on Greenland in, in terms of whether or not it's gaining ice and snow or losing ice and snow. 
see in the top graph right here, what we're looking at in blue here is current outlook here, excuse me, current conditions in terms of that total mass for snow and ice on Greenland. And again, this is a critical cold air source region for the winter season in the central and eastern U.S. is something that I like to closely monitor as we go through the fall season. A big uptick in that mass of snow and ice over Greenland over the last uh, couple of weeks or so to a relatively normal conditions here, but there's, again, a big uptick after there was a big sharp drop here. So we're right around the uh, mean of uh, the last several years here as, uh, as we stand right now. But down below here we can see, in fact, it's a little bit above that mean. This gray line right here is the mean of, again, the total snow and ice mass on Greenland here. This is the mean from 1981 to 2010. The blue is the current condition here. And we're now even slightly above. You can see slightly above the average here over the last 30-year uh, period. Well, it really extends from yeah, 1981 to 2010. And a little bit above normal. This red line here represents kind of a low point. This is when uh, the, the ice map mass reached kind of a low point relative to surrounding years, way above that right now here. Again, this is the current. This is the mean for, for that 1981 to 2010 period. So again, this is kind of on the colder side here, uh, and it's something we'll monitor closely over the next a few months here going into the winter season of 2025, 20, 2026. But Greenland, Hudson Bay, even the Great Lakes with respect to not only air temperatures, but uh, water temperatures here leading to uh, ice buildup on the Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes. Something we'll monitor closely. Again, maybe a few weeks to a month ahead of schedule in terms of the cool down in that part of North America. We'll see if this pattern continues over the next few months. Still, long ways to go to the winter season, but never too early to start looking at some of these cold air source regions. That's it for now. For Arkfieldweather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.